Thanks everybody for, for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Michael Herman. I'm the owner of Gibson's Bookstore. And my guest tonight is Glenn Knobloch, the author of The Hidden History of Lake Winnipesaukee. It's a new book just out, um, how long ago? It just came out last week, is that right? Uh, no, a couple of days ago, two days ago, oh, I think. I am losing track of time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <not> this week. <laughs> so you brand you don't know You don't know when every book in your store comes out? Oh, well, so far as you know, I know, <laughs> except for that. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a, it's a great history. It's great New Hampshire history. And, and just the idea of hidden history is, uh, is fascinating as we were talking, uh, talking earlier. So uh, Glenn, let me, let me take it away. And, um, and thanks to everybody for joining us this evening. I'm going to, I'm going to stop my video and, and uh, Glenn will share his book. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Michael. And I do want to thank uh, I do want to thank uh, Gibson's Bookstore for uh, hosting this author's event. Uh, uh, I live here in Wolfboro, but my wife and I frequently travel to Concord, and uh, inevitably, if we go to Concord, we're going to Gibson's Book, and we're going to buy something. I don't know what, uh, but uh, it's a it's a real institution here in the state of New Hampshire. So I appreciate uh, their support, and um, especially supporting local authors like myself. Uh, uh, I I'm calling. We're, I'm on here tonight from Wolfboro, which is uh, where I live, right in the heart of the Lakes region. Uh, sounds like many of you have been up this way, whether it's Alton or uh, uh, somewhere around the lake. And uh, uh, I'm a uh, have a degree in history from Bowling Green State University out in Ohio, which is actually where I'm from. I moved out here over 30 years ago, so I really have lived. Uh, uh, more than, well, more than half of my life out here in New Hampshire. So I consider myself a New Hampshireite. And I've lived in the Lakes region for almost two decades now. So uh, uh, I write on a number of topics. Uh, I mentioned uh, in the uh, our earlier conversation, my New England shipbuilding book also came out, which dis discusses uh, 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 region-wide uh, ship shipbuilding through time. But uh, tonight we're gonna talk about the hidden history of Lake uh, Winnipesaukee. Uh, which is a book I'm really uh, uh, quite pleased to have come out and uh, especially a good timing with the beginning of summer. And uh, uh, with that, we'll kind of, I got a little PowerPoint presentation we'll uh, go through and uh, let me see if I can get that up here in a minute. And here we go, it's the hidden history of Lake Winnipesaukee. Now, of course, I'm not gonna tell you everything in a book because I want you to buy the book, but we're gonna hit on some of the uh, interesting topics that uh, you might find in the book and hopefully uh, pique your curiosity enough to uh, take a look-see. And I always like to ask this question as I was writing the book, uh, you know, I not only asked this of myself as one who lives literally about five football fields away from the lake, but I also asked people that I kind of encountered and even people I knew in the region, you know, what does the, the big lake, as we call Lake Winnipesaukee up here, what does it mean to you? you know, it's all about fun, relaxing. You know, if you're coming from far away, coming up here, certainly that's your, what you're doing. Uh, but what about history? You know, do we think about that when we come up to, up to Lake Winnipesaukee? And um, the answers on that vary quite a bit. Um, uh, some people, uh, do think about the history a little bit, but only in an offhanded way. And most people say, well, no, I'm really more concerned about getting my boat in the water or getting that fishing pole wet or whatever. So as I like to say, no, no matter where you go, history has uh, been happening all around the lake for ages. We just don't always notice, notice it. Uh, and here's a couple of views up here. Some of you, if you've traveled around the lake, I would say that maybe you've seen some of these sites uh or some of these this individual or uh some of this stuff may be foreign to you who knows so uh, my goal in writing this book was just to bring some of these hidden things to light and you know really when we talk about hidden history you know i think of that in a couple different ways and that's the way this book was constructed sure some of the a few of these things are really out there in the open and things that you may have driven by sites that you may have driven by or things you may have heard of in your travels, or maybe you've seen it on a sign. For example, Wolfboro. When you come into Wolfboro, you see the sign that says, uh, you know, America's oldest summer resort. 
But then I always wonder how, how far how far do people get with that? Do they have they explored that history behind that, or you know what do they think really? Um, hidden also can mean literally hidden history that's on the back roads, right? Stuff that we don't always uh, notice, or you know, if you're a visitor to this area, maybe you don't you're not taking some of these back roads and checking out some of these things that you might happen upon. Uh, so hidden can have a, a couple of different contexts, and that's what I really like to uh, explore in my book is a different context and hidden hidden meanings uh, behind the word and what is out there. Um, and uh, so uh, in 20 different chapters, we start kind of chronologically, start with uh, kind of the the very beginnings or some of the, we talk about some of the, I talk about some of the Native American aspects of uh, uh, Lake Winnipesaukee history. Uh, I quote uh, one uh, uh, writer in the book who says, uh, when you talk about a scenic place anywhere around Lake Winnipesaukee, and I thought this was really profound. If you thought that this is a great scenic view or someplace that you'd like to build a house or spend a weekend, chances are someone did that not just a hundred years ago or two hundred years ago, you know, perhaps a thousand years ago. After all, the Weirs uh, in uh, Laconia is a place where Native Americans came to summer. It was a nice, beautiful place uh, for them to uh, uh, come and visit. So, uh, chances are, anywhere around the lake uh, 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 that you've picked out as your favorite uh, scenic spot, someone else has done that long before you. So we place some of that history in context. However, it's also important to remember that uh, the Lakes region is really so much more than that. It's so much more than just tourism. Uh, it's not just the natural setting, but there's a lot of interesting things here. We, for example, we don't really think of the Lakes region as a place of industry, do we? But the places like the Belknap Mill in Laconia, uh, the Berry Mill in Wolfboro, and uh, some of the, the Mills Falls, where the Mills Falls Marketplace is in Meredith today was a, a major mill center. We don't always think about things, these things, and there are remnants of them. And the history behind these mills and the hundreds of workers that they employed over the years and the things that they made is really a, a hidden part of our history. Uh, not a lot of manufacturing going on in the Lakes region today, other than in the town of Laconia, but, uh, uh, but uh, it, it wasn't always so. So once again, we look at the context of, of an area and uh, have to remember that the Lakes region and the area around Lake Winnipesaukee was once uh, you know, uh, also home to many working people. And uh, the lake life that many of us love today, myself included, uh, uh, the region wasn't always thought of in that way. Uh, religion is off, often a big part of folks' lives. And uh, again, the religious history of the area is quite fascinating. And I delve into that in several chapters. New Durham uh, is the founding, one of the founder, founding places where the free will Baptist religion was established in America. There were several different branches, but the major branch was established right here uh, close to Lake Winnipesaukee in New Durham. So the story behind that is a fascinating one. On a more personal level, if you go to the East Alton, New Hampshire, and you look at their old meeting house there, which is a beautiful structure, uh, there's quite a bit of history behind that and how its membership uh, fluctuated over the years, including in the year 1825 when it reached its greatest peak, all because of a lightning strike uh, that uh, killed a member of town there. And uh, where you can see the remnants uh, of that lightning strike uh, in town to this day, not literally, but figuratively. So religion uh, all around the lake has played an important part in people's lives. And it's a, it's a really fascinating story. Of course, the Civil War had its impact on really every community uh, in the East in America, certainly in New Hampshire, every community uh, sent men off to war, but uh, it had a greater impact uh, perhaps in the Lakes region beyond the Civil War years after 1865. Many people do not realize that the 
uh, veterans of the Civil War, their focal point uh, one weekend a year was in the Lakes region. And so uh, many of the regiments uh, that uh, uh, their surviving members uh, built buildings uh, right uh, along Lakeside Avenue where they could come and gather uh, in the years after the wartime. The one that you see on the left, the New Hampshire Veterans Association building is probably the most identifiable and it's in the best shape. Many of these other buildings are in rough shape today and many people who don't know their history have actually advocated that these buildings be torn down and maybe uh, you know more uh, uh, profitable enterprises could be built there. That would be the worst thing that could be done if you're a history lover. So uh, there's a lot of Civil War history that is focused on the Lakes region, uh, perhaps more so than in, in any other uh, town and area in the state. And of course, uh, the coming of the railroad played its part in the Lakes region as well. Uh, you'll see a bottom view there of uh, Wolfboro, and you can see uh, the, the old train station, which is still there in Wolfboro. I actually talk about another station that was in town that uh, uh, let's just put it this way. You think traffic in Wolfboro is backed up in July uh, and that maybe in an earlier time, things were a little bit quieter or uh, more organized, far from it. Uh, the tourists that have been coming to Wolfboro and Meredith and Alton and places like that uh, had huge amounts of visitors arriving by train. So um, uh, the tourist, uh, uh, Mecca that we are today uh, has been going on for well over 150 years uh, now. And some of the interesting infrastructure, especially if you're a railroad buff, is discussed in this book and where you can see remnants of that. And again, uh, it's funny, I talked to many younger people who even the idea of a railroad is a foreign thing. And uh, so to see remnants of that and uh, what once was uh, uh, really uh, was of interest to uh, many younger people that I found during the course of my research. And of course, I have to talk about tourism in the book because that has been a big part uh, uh, of the lake's history. And uh, so at the bottom there, you see a view of the current Mount Washington, the, the motor vessel Mount Washington, which is uh, an icon. If you've uh, ever visited up here, there's a very good chance you've trod our decks. Um, however, the history of that uh, boat has uh, uh, ties that go back to the 1870s, even though the current Mount Washington uh, was built uh, really in the, in the uh, 1930s. So uh, it has an interesting history all uh, hidden uh, behind its uh, facade today. And here we see a view from, of Center Harbor and this uh, view here kind of belies an interesting story in the book that talks about the first college sporting event uh, ever held in the United States took place in the waters uh, off Center Harbor. And this was a shocker to me. I love uh, sports and uh, uh, I like some college sports and uh, I never knew that Center Harbor, uh, the area there was the home of college sports in America from the very beginning. And uh, so I think that will appeal to uh, many folks and some of the ideas surrounding it and uh, perhaps uh, uh, give folks a new perspective as well. And this is uh, another uh, favorite part of my book. And uh, uh, now many folks may say, including a chapter on African-Americans was done to be politically correct or uh, perhaps in light of the uh, uh, Black Lives Matter movement. That's really not true. Uh, I've been uh, documenting uh, African-American history throughout New Hampshire and New England for a long time now as part of my career. And what is fascinating is that uh, the Lakes region and New Hampshire in general, of course, we have a, a pretty uh, much a lack of diversity in New Hampshire for a variety of reasons. Uh, but uh, there is a hidden history of sorts with African-Americans, folks of color that has started here. You can see, for example, the grave uh, over in Guilford of Moses Dustin, a black man who served as a private uh, in the famed 54th Massachusetts, uh, who, uh, uh, which was uh, documented in the famous movie Glory with Denzel Washington. Uh, closer on the other opposite side of the lake though, 
uh, is a really fascinating story about a, a man who uh, moved here uh, in the immediate aftermath of the Civil War and had a presence in their family, had a presence in the town of Ossipee uh, for well over 100 years. The Wilkins family, first Carrie Wilkins, and then his son, Erlen Wilkins, who is pictured here. And we can see uh, their old homestead in Ossipee and the, the story of how the, this uh, uh, one black family in a small lakes region community uh, really uh, uh, made a difference, so to speak, and uh, uh, made their mark in small ways, yet uh, ways that were uh, uh, very distinguishable. On the opposite side of the lake, on the southern side of the lake, in the towns like uh, Gilmanton especially, there was actually for New Hampshire, a, a larger African-American population that began after the American Revolution. So there is a black history here to be discovered if only we choose to look for it. So I really like this chapter in the book and I think it will open your eyes to uh, what the Lakes region has meant to other groups of people. And of course, despite all the fun that goes on in here, the Lakes region has been a center of learning of sorts uh, 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 in, at times throughout her history. Uh, of course, we have uh, Brewster Academy, we have academies over in New Hampton and other towns, but uh, throughout history, uh, uh, there's been some interesting things going on. I mean, Meredith, for example, uh, one of the most famous almanac makers and educators in America lived and worked and calculated as Almanacs, uh, Dudley Levitt. So, uh, uh, what you see here, this uh, weird little cat like uh, drawing, is uh, one of the academic awards that Dudley Levitt would give out to his students uh, who uh, 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 graced his presence, so to speak. And then, of course, we see the, the town hall in Gilmanton there, which has a, a much greater history than most normal town halls perhaps would be, be live. So uh, education has been a really important part of the Lakes region. And uh, so we're not just fun and games up here, folks. We're all also about uh, education. And of course, the recent history of the Lakes region, uh, you know, obviously everywhere history is ongoing, right? But you no, know, we've got some recent history in the Laconia State School uh, up in uh, Laconia. Uh, this is a fascinating institution. When it was first built in 1903, it was a place that uh, towns all across New Hampshire vied to have this institution in, the, in their community. Uh, of course, by the end in the uh, 1990s, that would not prove to be the case. So um, it has a tragic history. It has a disturbing history. So it, it reminds us that uh, you know not all history is uh, is uh, pleasant, uh, but sometimes these stories need to be told as well. On the other hand, uh, the uh, only uh, FAA approved ice runway in the town of Alton is uh, just a fascinating one that uh, if you've not explored that aspect of lakes history, you know, we think of the lakes region really as a summer mecca, so to speak, but even in the winter time, beyond the snowmobiling, beyond the ice fishing. Uh, if you're the uh, pilot of a small aircraft and have ever had a, uh, incline, had a desire to land your plane on an ice runway, well, this is the place you can come to do it. So uh, the story of how that runway got established and how it works today is a fascinating one. And um, uh, I think that'll open some people's eyes as well. And so, you know, I kind of end this small presentation with the fact that uh, I love my kayaking, by the way. It's nice to get out on the kayak, uh, but uh, the exploring that we're talking about here tonight is a different type of exploring. So I always tell people my book, I hope that you'll read it uh, at night in your, whether it's in your home, if you live in the Lakes region, or if you have a, a, a summer place up here and come, I hope that you'll uh, read it. I also hope that you'll uh, maybe bring it along. Better yet, buy an extra copy, keep it in the glove compartment of your, of your, uh, of your uh, car or truck. And uh, as you go by these places, whip it out and uh, take a look, see. And uh, I hope that um, if I've done my job right, it's a book that you'll kind of turn to again and again. 
and uh, uh, you know, reacquaint yourself with some of these history as you, uh, you know, make your way around the, the lakes region at different points in your life. And uh, so, uh, with that, I'll uh, uh, like to open it up if we can to some questions, uh, and uh, we can uh, uh, certainly. Uh, uh, if anybody has any questions in particular, I'd be happy to answer them. I know that a lot of people have been commenting, or some people have been commenting in the chat about, uh, you know, memories at Lake Winnipesaukee, like when they had summer jobs or visited with their parents or did work. With yeah. And uh, that was a, another fun part of this book. Uh, I talked to many local historical societies, other historians, uh, folks who have uh, 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 you know, uh, been in this region or come to this region for many years. And some of these people uh, were great resources in finding some of these uh, uh, places of history. Uh, others uh, were interested in learning about them from a, from a historian who's only been up here 20 years. So uh, sometimes even locals, believe it or not, can kind of get blinded. You get uh, used to what you see. That's the other thing about hidden history, right? You drive by a place every day you kind of spot it, you know that there's something there, but you never really kind of explore it. And that's, once again, what this what this book is all about. Um, I see a question, do I discuss the islands on the lake? I don't go into great detail. I do talk about Governor's Island and what happened there. Uh, that's probably the most extensive uh, 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 talk that I have. And I would say, uh, uh, June on your question there. I really try to uh, present fresh material. There's actually been a couple of books that have been written about all of the islands on the lake. So I try not to duplicate what other historians or naturalists have done. I see uh, Janine has asked how long was the entire process for the book. That's a, an interesting question. And it's a complicated one because uh, uh, a book, uh, I can actually write pretty quickly, but it's all about the research and gathering materials and things like that. So uh, I've lived up here 20 years. And I could say in a way I've get, been gathering materials for, uh, you know, probably 15 of those years. I'm the type of historian where I come across something I've got some information on. Believe it or not, I used to have paper files. I don't do that so much anymore, but I tuck away some information in a paper file and say, all right, I may use that at a later point. And then at some point it all comes together. And so that's kind of how this book came, came together is putting together some of this gathered knowledge that I've you know, acquired or researched or come across during research for other books I've written and said, hey, that's a, that's a really interesting thing. So uh, it's, uh, we could say it's uh, taken a number of years to write, uh, but uh, uh, that's, that's the best I can do. So um, 67. Seventh year on the lake. That's impressive down in Guilford there. So uh, um, once again, what's not to like about coming up here? It's, uh, 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 it's, a, it's a beautiful area. And I hope that I have kind of given you a new perspective or at least a chance to find out uh, some other information about the lake that uh, even if you've been up here 67 years, you may not know. And uh, that's my challenge. Uh, and if I've done that for uh, Larry from Guilford and others, then uh, I think uh, we'll, uh, uh, then I'll, I will have accomplished my goal. So um, I, uh, I always say this is, is the place to come up, go boating lake. But you know, there's those rainy days, right? Where you got to sit on the porch and read a book, or maybe you're going to get out on a road trip and hit some things that uh, you can get in and out of the car. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the, my goal here. So. And uh, if anybody wants to type in, uh, I'm looking at the chat here. I see someone diving for money when they went went uh, up here. Uh, yeah, I wonder I wonder how much you found diving there. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> we've got uh, some uh, talking about the old vacation places on the weirs, and I actually believe there has been uh, some other books written about that. Some of the different resort areas. Uh, and kind of their, their little histories as well. So uh, what about it, folks? Anything else? Glenn, I have a question about, um, sure. I've always been fascinated with the, uh, the Millerites, the end of the world religious sect. Um, 
I, and yeah. There's a connection with Lake Winnipesaukee. What, what is that? I... Well, that story is actually one of the chapters in my book. I talk about uh, William Miller, how he made uh, several visits to the Lakes region. And uh, of course, the, uh, uh, the family that owned Governors Island uh, really um, uh, were very religious. And they were of, of, a, um, of an interesting bent, uh, several different religious philosophies. Uh, 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 took hold there with that family on Governor's Island, but they were particularly taken with Millerism. And uh, it's one of the few places where William Miller actually spent a good, uh, I think, three days there uh, as guests of the family and also, uh, you know, holding these uh, uh, revival meetings. The interesting part that I discuss is all the uh, religious fervor and the uh, really excess of emotion that took place during these uh, kind of almost these revival type meetings. William Miller, the head of the Millerites, uh, uh, truly disdained that type of meeting. He wanted his, uh, his gatherings to be uh, more thoughtful and uh, uh, he did not like the wild excesses that his uh, faith provoked, if you will. So I do talk about that in Governor's Island. And it's, of course, it's such a um, uh, contrast to what we see on Governor's Island today, this very kind of exclusive and gated community and things like that. So um, uh, what it used to be uh, where, where one family owned the island. Um, once again, the old Chris Crafts and the Lakers, I see a, a question there from Karen. Uh, that, again, has been covered w very adequately by other historians. Uh, uh, and again, some of the churches I do uh, cover around the lake and some things like that. So uh, one of the $50 boathouse tours, I have actually been on a boathouse tour. I don't think I had to pay $50. Maybe I got a discount, but uh, <laughs> those are really fascinating. Uh, and it gives you an entirely different view uh, uh, perspective of the shoreline, of course. So anytime you can uh, take those uh, boat tours, uh, I highly recommend them. My family likes to do them, uh, even though they've done them multiple times. There's, uh, you know, once again, the history on those, uh, it never gets old really, so. A boat tour just gives you such a different perspective, whether it's on Lake Winnipesaukee or in Chicago, you know, just. Yeah, anywhere you go, you're just looking at that uh, location uh, from a uh, different point of view. I see Dick is uh, asking about uh, Native American sites. That's the, that's the most unfortunate thing is most of these sites are obliterated. I do talk a little bit over on the other side of the lake in Tuftonboro and uh, some of the uh, Native American remains that were discovered there as well as in Ossipee. Uh, so it's un really unfortunate because the, uh, the uh, most of that history of course, has been wiped out. And uh, other than some of the archaeological digs at the weirs, uh, at that uh, old uh, ancient, uh, all right, good man, I like to see that. So uh, uh, unfortunately, but I do discuss that uh, uh, in, in some uh, uh, in some detail on uh, in regards to Tufton Borough and Ossipi as well. The uh, uh, shipbuilding book, uh, we can talk about that too. That's uh, is a case where I also featured the lakes region in there because uh, uh, in addition to the ocean going craft that were uh, built all over New England, we forget about the lake boats that were really an important part of people's lives. So you know, interspersed with uh, you know the main down easters that I feature and the clipper ships that were built in Massachusetts and Maine and Connecticut and all those places. I also do discuss some of the lake boats that uh, uh, we're on Lake Champlain, Lake Winnipesaukee. So even there, you're going to have uh, a little bit of new uh, lakes region history in my shipbuilding book. So, and uh, again, it looks like Janine's going to be stopping by tomorrow. That's good. So we'll have it up um, for you, Janine. <laughs> oh, this is a good question. Look at this one. Any truth to stories about Nazis living around the lake during World War II? That's not one I ever came about, uh, saw or uh, uh, found any evidence of that. Uh, so that's not one I'm, I would be able to, to comment on. I know, I don't know anything 
asking about that. So, uh, um, or the context of that question, whether there would have been Nazis hiding out, I would, I would think that would have been very hard, but uh, um, that's, that's not one I discuss in my book. Um, that would be a good novel. That sounds like that could be a very good novel. I don't, I don't know. It might be a, it might be a frightening one. I really don't want to think about Nazis uh, up here in our beautiful area. But uh, um, oh, Janine is asking, what is my next book? I'm actually, uh, for those of you that may recognize my my name, or I've done a lot of uh, presentations with the New Hampshire Humanities over the years, and one of my areas of expertise, uh, by the way, is. Uh, uh, New Hampshire cemeteries and gravestones, and I'm currently working on a book about um, uh, New Hampshire's Civil War gravestones. So it's a kind of a history of the Civil War for New Hampshire, but from the perspective of the cemetery. So um, uh, I show a New Hampshire soldier who was killed in every major battle in the Civil War. That's what you can find in New Hampshire cemetery. So I'm working on that. The Burger King by boat tradition that even Mitt Romney did. That's another one someone's asking about. I am not familiar with the Burger King by boat. So uh, I wonder where that Burger King was. Certainly wasn't in my town of Wolfboro. We don't, we don't allow any of that up here. So <laughs> we have a question in the Q&A about Pogus Bay. Um, was it separate from the lake at one point? I don't know the answer to that. You know, I, that uh, is probably more for a, a geologist to answer. You know, all these lakes, of course, were carved out during the Ice Age. I don't think, uh, I'm not sure that that was ever separate, although I, I know there have been various channels dug and stuff. So it's possible it was. I, again, that's uh, not, not something I can answer to, so. The Ice okay. Age was a little bit of a weird, um... Uh, it was the lake was formed by the ice age, wasn't it? By the glaciers? Yes, yeah, the receding glaciers and and stuff like most of the uh, lakes here in in, uh, in in New England. But uh, yeah, what I'm trying to remember, I have to kind of I'm trying to visualize that map of Pogus Bay and uh, trying to remember if if uh, if those uh, were connected, man-made. I and again, I don't discover any aspect of that. And that brings us to the point, will there ever be a follow-up to this book? Well, as some of our questions show, there certainly could be because uh, there's, uh, we're just covering 20 different aspects of, of Lake Winnipesaukee and the region's history. You know, we could do a book with, you know, 100, 200 chapters probably if, uh, especially depending upon how much in the weeds we want to get. So, uh, but uh, the ones that I've included here are ones that I think you can, uh, find a tangible location. And I think they're ones that are eminently relatable. So uh, that was one of my goals to get history that people might be interested in actually. So, okay. Yeah, it's funny, wherever you go, there's, um, there's just such a rich history. If you just look for it, whether you walk around the island of Manhattan and try to imagine it a thousand years before, or, right. or walking around Lake Winnipesaukee and just, you know, go back a hundred, 200, 400 years. Um, yeah. It's just such a rich texture. Yeah, and I think uh, for um, most people, you know, and even myself sometimes, you know, you're in, you live in an area, you kind of get used to what you see. Yeah. And over the years, you say, okay, that building closed, that building got torn down. I, I've thought that about Wolfboro many times, some of the buildings that we've lost over the years. And that happens everywhere. But what's kind of interesting from a historian's perspective, I do often spend a lot of time, I don't want to say daydreaming, but I do think about the past and often will think about no matter where I go, what did, what was here 100 years ago, 500 years ago. So that's, I think, the, uh, uh, the um, historian's perspective. Karen does ask about the name Winnipesaukee, where that come from. That's actually a Native American uh, name. And uh, I'm embarrassed. To, I think there are several different uh, uh, interpretations of that, but it has something to do with the great waters smiling, uh, Smile uh, smiling on us. Yeah. Something like that. yeah. So I've seen several different translations of that. I'm not sure anybody really, really uh, knows, but uh, oh, this is a good one. The novel published called Nazi Gold in New Hampshire. Yeah. I think that's probably just a Nazi. Uh, 
uh, and uh, if uh, there's gold being stored in the hull of the old Mount Washington, which burned uh, uh, burned to the water line, uh, yeah, I don't I don't think uh, as uh, uh, as much as the Mount Washington was a pretty important boat. Uh, there wasn't a lot of gold being uh, traveled, uh, carried in, in there. So it does make for a good novel, I'll bet. Now, I may have to check that novel out. I don't know. I love World War II novels, so who knows? It's not That's not one I'd ever heard of. So I will have to check out David's suggestion there. So, but uh, anyway, uh, so, uh, you know, whether it's Native American history or if you like some of the colonial stuff, uh, one of my favorite stories in there, and I again, I'm not going to get fully into that, is uh, if I don't know how many of you on the call have been to Wolfboro, though, but we, we're probably one of the uh, most advertised towns on the, on the on the lake when it comes to our history. And what's fascinating is, is Wolfboro's most famous claim, and it, it, it's a true one, uh, didn't even take place on Lake Winnipesaukee. So uh, I'll leave that for others to buy the book and read the full story there. So, and so I, I hope everyone gets a copy of the book and I hope you enjoy it. And uh, what else, Mike, we got anything else? I don't know, how's the weather up there? Is it cleared up? We had a big storm it, rolling through. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's still pretty dark out. It's not raining anymore. So we're looking like we, we made it through. So it went from about 85 to 65 up here. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's cooled off a little bit, which I'm okay with. So that's all I'm right. Very much okay with it. I've been moving north my whole life to get away from the heat. I'm going to have to keep yeah. moving, I think. <laughs> uh, Dick has a question about Madame Chiang uh, Kai shek. Does she have a house on the lake? I will say, and I don't cover this in my book because, again, it's been covered elsewhere. She actually did have a house on the lake, uh, and that house is still there. Um, I, uh, I, I think that obviously that passed out of their family years ago, but uh, she actually did have a presence up here. So long before Mitt Romney came up here, yeah, we had some other important uh, political folks. And of course, uh, it's an interesting place to live uh, because, uh, you know, it's said that uh, just like other places in New Hampshire where, uh, you know, uh, small New Hampshire towns protect their famous visitors and, and don't give out uh, information and stuff like that. Uh, that is kind of true of Wolfboro. You know, we get some of the more modern celebrities up here. I came face to face in one summer with, uh, uh, you know, the the premier of France, uh, and uh, so I told my wife I could have reached out and grabbed him and done whatever. Uh, uh, so you do meet some interesting people up here on the streets. Sometimes it's unexpected. Uh, yeah. I've even seen Mitt Romney at the town dump. Believe it. Say what you will. Say what you will about Mitt Romney, whether you like his politics or not. Here's what I'll say about him: He empties his own trash. So, <laughs> yeah, you gotta like that. So, uh, there's all there's all sorts of people you see up here, and and sometimes even some of the uh, uh, female movie stars that you see up here, you barely recognize them because uh, you know they don't have makeup. And they're 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 uh, re really trying to uh, you know again fly under the radar, which I can't blame them at all. So, uh, so somebody could write uh, an entire book about Hollywood and uh, you know political celebs uh, coming to the Lakes region. I'm sure. So, uh, um, but anyway, that's uh, just uh, you know again part of the lake life living when you get a when you live in a place where thousands of tourists come every year. Uh, you see some interesting things. And, they and I'm going to hope that they get my book too. Mitt Romney better buy my book. So <laughs> well, he wants to buy in bulk. We yeah, that's right. Afford it. He knows where to come. That's right. Well, I will direct him to Gibson's for sure. That's right. All right, Michael. Well, Glenn, thank you so much for joining us. Let me, uh, one more plug for this wonderful book. One more plug. Yeah. Hidden History of Lake Winnipesaukee by Glenn Knobloch. It's available at uh, fine bookstores everywhere, especially bookstores in Concord, New Hampshire. Yeah, right. <laughs> Glenn, thank you so much for joining us tonight. This has been great. I love local history and and uh, this has really been very illuminating. I hope everybody's enjoyed this. Thank you very much, Michael, for hosting this. And I'd like to thank everybody who joined us tonight to, to take time out of your busy schedules. and. Uh, who knows, maybe when you come up uh, to a Wolfboro, the Lakes region, I'll, I'll see you out and about. So now that you know what I look like, now you know what my mug looks like here. So 
you, you never know, you might come across me. So another, uh, I want to thank another, everyone tonight. Thank yeah. you, Glenn. Thank you so much. Right. Thanks for everybody right. for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.